I'm Rob from Hopzine.com and thanks for joining me for another video beer review. This time we've got a double bill of beers from the Ashover Brewery in Ashover, Derbyshire. The first one that I'm going to be looking at when the camera chooses to focus is, there you go, But Pale Ale which is a 5.5% ABV, uh, bottle conditioned, um, unfiltered American Pale Ale. Um, I couldn't find out a hell of a lot of information on the web, uh, on the website. I think they're having a lot of revamping of the kind of the, of the brand and everything like that. But I've heard of the Ashover Brewery for, for years and years now. Uh, a good friend of mine, um, Janine, um, is the head brewer there. I think uh, I think her dad is is the owner of, the, of, of a couple of pubs and the, and the brewery. I think her sister runs one of the pubs. I've, as I said, I've known Janine for a number of years. I've never had the opportunity to uh, try any of her beers. Uh, I don't really get over that kind of area very often. I don't think their beer travels very far outside of the kind of local uh, local vicinity, really. So I've never had the opportunity to try these beers. But when I recently went to Manchester for Indie Man Beer Con, um, I picked up a couple of bottles because they're the full range. Because I know she did a uh, Meet the Brewer event there, a bit of a takeover type deal. And yeah, so I've always heard great things. You I mean, just from knowing your name for a number of years now, I mean, She's been, she's uh, travelled all over the world, knows the stuff, so I'd imagine, um, I mean, it looks like kind of traditional British beer. I, mean, I like the branding and the name and stuff, it's very traditional, but I'm imagining the beer is going to be far from that. So, I'm really excited to finally get to try some, because I mean, she's one of the most lovely people you could ever could have hoped to meet, so I'm really happy to finally get a couple of uh, beers. I'll leave the yeast in there. Beer in the glass, absolutely pin bright, quite a quite a, a brisk carbonation but the beer, pale gold. I said, I, I, I poured it out the, the um, sediment, which I think there is, I don't know if there's loads, a good amount in there. Other, other, other people who do videos probably would have chucked it all in but I like to keep my beer nice and bright. As you see, a really big fluffy white head, like whipped up egg whites. So check out the aroma. Wow. I've still got the tail end of a cold, so I'm probably not in top form. Big, grassy. Um, yeah, grassy, slightly herbal notes, like um, flat leaf parsley. But the big thing is bags and bags of big, tart citrus hops. Um, Definitely more on the kind of lemon side, a lot of orange, gooseberry. When I said orange, I mean not orange, uh, orange peel, that kind of thing. Yeah, lime juice. There is a kind of a, a wheaty note in the back end there. Not a hell of a lot, but it's definitely there. Uh, quite a basic backbone of um, kind of pale malt, which is bringing in a, a light kind of rich tea, kind of like biscuit. Which primarily is big, assertive, um, zesty citrus, really kind of like sharp citrus. So let's dive in. Cheers. Oh, blimey. That's got some kick. <laughs> It's mental, you know what I mean? Nothing against it, I mean, it does its job. But the branding kind of says, kind of, and the bottle, I mean, it's that, that iconic bottle. That, that's real ale, you get a real ale in one of those bottles. But this doesn't taste anything like you'd expect. If you just pick this up in like a farm shop or something, you would be surprised at the beer that you get in your glass. Mm. Big, assertive, hot bitterness. Not resinous, it's but it's it's quite sharp and cutting. And, and a lot of the flavours that were kind of pr promised on the nose. Big, sharp, puckering grapefruit, pithy orange, kiwi. There's a there's a, a floral note which reminds me of um, kind of. The smell of um, dandelions. 
Oh yeah, it's really kind of like, God, it comes up and meets you. Edging towards soapy, but isn't becoming soapy at all. Yeah, it's just it's just rained in from that last last kind of like peak because it's big and bitter, and it's a long bitterness. The bitterness is bitter lemon for me, lemon peel, let tart lemon juice. Yeah, definitely kiwi. Maybe a hint of melon. Ends quite dry. I mean, it's five point five. Um, if you look, oh, that one nice. Just on, uh, just on the small, on a small burp. Um, a real nice kind of more cantaloupe melon. Maybe a hint of kind of mango or papaya. But yeah, if you pick this up in San Diego, you would not be disappointed. You really wouldn't. You I mean it has got all that big assertive hop bitterness, but yeah, remaining balanced within the, I guess within itself because it's um, those flavours are very well well contained. It's just it's all that kind of like big sharp citrus lemon, uh, lemon juice, orange peel, and um, kind of lime zest, lime juice, kiwi stuff like that. Lovely. Mm. This is a bottle of beer. Uh, if it's still knocking around, I hope they keep the branding just for me for this purpose. So when I go to um, San Diego next year, I'd love to take a bottle of this for Ryan to try because I think he'd be shocked. Because you think he'd get, I'd pre present him with this. There you go. This is some <laughs> bottle of bottle of beer from Derbyshire. I mean, it looks like it. Looks like real ale, doesn't it? There you go. And he'd open it up and he'd be like, fuck me, that tastes like proper San Diego pale ale. And it does. And it's 5.5%. I think you do get, um, you are aware that it is that strong. Ooh. I'm going to have to sign off now because I want to do this as a as two part. I might not do them both today, but I want to um, back them onto each other. And this might end up being really long. I'm better, I'm stop, I'm just stop waffling. Shut up, shut up, get on with it. Anyway, I'm really impressed. That's lovely stuff. Drinkable, assertive, leaves you with a bit of presence as well. I mean, it's it's got a big whack of bitterness, but de never overpowers, never becomes astringent. Lovely stuff. So that's a bottle of uh, Butts Pale Ale. <coughs> Excuse me. Well carbonated. <laughs> From the Ashover, Ashover Brewery in Ashover, Derbyshire. I'm really happy that these beers, well, this beer has turned out to be as nice as it is. Because I've been looking forward to trying this uh, brewery for quite some time. Anyway, I'll see you in part two and we'll be looking at another beer which is called Sundial. So I'll see you in a second. Cheers. Right, so we're on with the next bottle of beer from the Ashover Brewery and it's a bottle of their Sundial. 6.3% ABV, once again very little detail, pretty much <laughs> next to no details about this beer on the bottle and online as well, I mean I did do a bit of looking around, Ray Beer call it an English strong ale which is the, the, one of the most ridiculously uh, wide uh, kind of parameters of, of any beer style, what's an English strong ale well, if you ask me, it's something like Fuller's Vin Vintage Ale or something like that. The uh, only other thing I saw could find about this beer, they call it a generously hopped IPA which, to be honest, I'm hoping that that's the case. Yeah, well, <laughs> by the looks of it, it's pale golden, slightly more orangey than the uh, Butts Pale Ale, which I had last night. This is the following night I'm having this one. And, um, yeah, I mean, I won't put it past it, but I, I wouldn't expect Janine to make it like a traditional British beer. I mean, She's got a better taste than that. <laughs> Quite a significant head. Beer in the glass, much more hazy this time. Uh, kind of like, yeah, a hazy, kind of very golden colour. See if I can kill off a bit of that head with, with my greasy head. A couple of greasy fingers in there. The head, pretty much pure white. Very frothy, very tight, kind of frothy top. Probably not going to get a hell of a lot of aroma through that, no, through that um, head, but let's give it a go. No, it's completely light. Similar, very similar kind of nose. It's definitely on that kind of, the front of um, 
uh, citrus, so lemon and lemon juice I'd say this time once again, maybe slightly sweeter orange, maybe like a big Jaffa orange, definitely, um, excuse me, cantaloupe, melon, lychee, yeah actually, yeah, it's more on that kind of melon, yeah melon, lychee, gooseberry, that kind of thing. Slightly wheaty, but yeah, I've no idea about anything else about this beer that, that apart from it smells really kind of full of big citrus. It might it might be a wheat beer for, for all I know, but I mean there's a little detail available about it online. So anyway, let's dive in. Let's waffle. More drinking. Cheers. Oh, beautiful. Yeah, that's stunning. That's lovely. Mmm. Simon, real ale guide, real ale craft beer, whatever you want to call yourself these days. You would be blown away by these, mate. Um, they, they'd be right up your street. Big, aggressive, hoppy beers. Another one. But masquerading as kind of real ale from the look of that. Janine, I, 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 if, if you watch this, if you've still not got this re your brewery rebranded, come and see me. I'll, I'll help you out. Just give me some, just give me some free beer. You know, you know us, us bloggers. It was all about the fruit beer. <laughs> well, happily help you out if you're trying to rebrand this beer because, and I say that in the best possible way because this beer needs to be out there and it needs to be enjoyed by people who have got these kind of who enjoy these kind of flavours. I mean, I enjoy big hoppy beers, and and I think it's fair to say this kind of flavour appeals to the craft beer drinker but what a terrible kind of broad term that is but it's people who are, who are prepared for bigger flavours for bigger hot bitterness and the average cascade drinker they're, they're probably not prepared for it and also I think a lot of those people who would like a nice pint of best and a nice pint of mild are going to turn their nose up at a beer that is 6.3% for starters for me this is a bit more um, rounded out than um, the um, Butts Pale Ale, which is 5.5. .5. Still quite a strong beer, I mean, but on the... If you're putting this down, I mean, this is real ale, it'd be real ale in a 500ml bottle. Um, but I think this has got a bit more sweetness to it. It's got a bit more kind of like that br softer, sweet brioche backbone to it. Still with a big, assertive, sharp hop bit hit, hop bitterness this time I'm going to say fresh grapefruit pithy orange once again maybe maybe a bit more kind of like lemon curd this time since that lemon's not quite sharp and cutting because there's a, obviously it's strong a bit more malt and I think that malt is really kind of like balancing it out rounding it off it's got a real nice quality as well not sure what yeast yeast strain she's using for these beers for me I don't think it's a traditional British yeast strain because those hops have been allowed to really sing. Maybe it's something like a like your California pale ale yeast strain, like your kind of your Chico, kind of Sierra Nevada kind of yeast strain, because it's so clean and it's just letting those hops kind of perform and really shout out and really do what you're hoping they're gonna do. Mm. Yeah, I think that's stunning. Actually better than the Butts Pale Ale. That was very nice. A bit more sharp. A bit more cutting puckering bitterness. This one's got that bit more bit more malt. A bit more sweetness. And that's world class. I mean, that is really good. Once again, as I said last night, I'd take, I'd take this to um, San Diego and I'm sure Ryan would be like, fucking hell, that's really hoppy. That's really nice, nicely bitter. But it's not, it's not over the top. There is other, shall we say, northern breweries who kind of maybe overdo the bitterness in the beers and this certainly isn't one this is an absolute stormer this beer needs to be more readily available it needs to be in I mean there's nothing wrong with that but it just looks like real ale and it deserves a bit more care and attention Janine if you don't want me to do it have a word of Andy, Andy Mogg over at um, Lemon Top Designs because he's done some beautiful stuff and they'll they'll sort you out because this beer needs to be drank by more people. It needs to be in more shots because it's damn fine. It's it's right up there as far as kind of like hoppy beer goes. Put this next to a kernel and you I mean it, it's as good. It's as good as uh, I mean pick a kernel um, pale ale, 
Colonel IPA. That's as good, if mm, sometimes better actually. That might be. That's a real stormer. And I'm not just saying that because she's a friend. Because that is really good. Please, please make it more of it widely available. This is a plea to Zach Avery. You probably don't watch this, Zach, but start stocking Janine's beer. It's really good because it's the only place I could find this beer ever has been at Beer Moth, which is a fantastic little shop. Two fantastically lovely guys who run it as well. That is a bottle of Ashover's Sundial. I could go on forever about this beer because it's really, really good. Sundial, I'm going to say it's... Um, American Pale Ale, maybe American IPA, 6.3% ABV, don't know what hops are in it, don't know what, I don't essentially know what they're aiming for, but one thing they've achieved is a fantastically tasty hoppy beer. I love it. So that's two beers from the Ashova Brewery in, uh, in Ashova in Derbyshire. Um, the brewer, uh, Janine Sharrock, over there. Um, two fantastic pale ales, they've got a, a nice range of bottled beers out now. Um, it's the uh, the brewery is based at the Old Poets Corner, uh, which is uh, a pub owned by I think, I think owned by the family. I might be wrong on these details. I spoke to Janine for about this in particular for a while. So, but as far as I remember, it is but fantastic beer. People need to be drinking this. Cause it's really good. Anyway, I'm, I'm going to stop waffling. It's a star. Anyway, I'm Rob from Hopzine.com. See you next time. Cheers.